in this chapter, we are looking for the approximation of pi. Uh, pi is known a uh, long time ago, actually, from Greek period. And, uh, but the notation pi that we are using is done by some people. So please read, always, right? I'm, I'm not going to read for you guys, right? So please check all the reading assignments. So please read this one. But in here, in this uh, video, I want to just show how to get this uh, approximation for pi uh, using the same method uh, that Archimedes did. Okay? Uh, it's actually looking for the, the circumference of a circle. So let's just take the approximation through some inscribed regular polygon. Okay? So the first one, you can start from the triangle and the, the square and like that, right? But let's start from this hexagon. So let's say the the diameter of the, the circle is D, okay? so which means this is D. And let's just find out the formula for the perimeter P6 of this inscribed regular hexagon. So meaning of P6 is the total length of this inscribed hexagon within that uh, circle, given circle, which has the diameter d. Then from this kind of addition, because we take the entire 360 degrees into six equal uh, angles, right? So each one should be 60 degrees. It's known. And all these line segments are red eye, right? Together, so they are congruent each other, same size. So when you look at this triangle only, this is isosceles triangle, just two sides are congruent each other. And their opposite angles are also congruent. Okay? So we know that the sum of interior angles of triangle is 180. So in that triangle, we have 60 plus, let's say it's angle A degrees, right? Then we have two A degrees, because they are congruent to each other. So two A degrees is 120, so A degrees is 60, which means these all three angles are same. So they are all congruent to each other which means this isosceles triangle is actually equilateral triangle. Which means this is same as radius. And radius is half of the diameter. Therefore, this length must be half of the diameter. Then P6 is just the sum of this six boundaries of this hexagon, so 6 times d over 2, which is 3d. And it's not needed, but if you think this d is double of radius, then you can think this is 2r, okay, r for the radius, and that means it's 6r, okay. Or it can be changed to 2 times 3r, right? So we know the circumference of circle with radius r is 2 pi r. So if you compute this one and that, then the actual answer is pi, but for p6, the number is 3. So definitely, when you look at each partition, the length of this side of the hexagon is smaller than the length of this arc, right? So we have that much differences. Now let's try to find out the perimeter of the hexagon, regular hexagon, but now it's circumscribed the given circle, right? So the previous one was like this, right? Inscribe once like that. So the length is small letter p sub 6, and 
the parameter of this circumscribed regular hexagon is capital cell P6, right? So, be careful about the notations. Then to calculate the length, we need those small piece of white triangle. Okay, so when you put the foot of this altitude from the center to one of these side of this hexagon, then we know already that this one separate this 360 into 60 pieces, right? So this is a 60 degrees, right? For each piece is 60 degrees. So clearly, when you have this one should be half, right? Because it's the same one, so it's going to be 30 degrees. And what you want to know is just that length, x, because from there we can make it 2x and 6 of this, right? So 12x should be the value we are looking for. Then this one is radius, or it's the d over 2, clearly. So when you look at this one, we have this ratio for 60 degrees and 30 degrees okay, for the right triangle. The ratio for the side is 2, 1, square root of 3. So in this case, we know this is right angle, 90 degrees, and that is 30 degrees, and this should be 60 degrees. So that triangle must follow in these ratios. So when you look at those legs of this triangle, the bottom is x, and the height is d over 2, but similar to 1 and square root of 3. So when you think ratio between d over 2 over x is same as square root of 3 over 1. Let me multiply x on both sides. Then d over 2 equals square root of 3 x. So x must be d over 2 square root of 3. And we already know the one side of this hexagon is 2x. So entire parameter should be 6 times of 2x. So capital P sub 6 is 12 times x. Actually, 6 times 2x. Right? So it's going to be 12x. So 12 times d over 2 square root of 3. And it's going to be 6d over square root of 3. So from this result, uh, let me just simplify a little bit, then it's going to be 2 square root 3 d, right? Doesn't matter. So we know this length is going to be greater than the actual circumference of this circle, right? For each part. When you look at it, this one, the length of this one, and compared to this, that is greater than this one, right? So this should be greater than the actual circumference of circle. So if you compare the previous result and this one, then we know that the actual circumference is between 3D and 2 square root of 6, 3D. Okay? So using this method, I mean using these two Archimedes actually separate each side into two parts, equal parts. Then from that hexagon he could get this dodecagon. And of course using the ins inscribed ones, you got the inscribed one and uh, the circumscribed ones to the circumscribed one. So he just keep doing this method. So next one is 24, 48, 96 side polygons, right? So let's just try to see how to, what is the parameter for 
P12 case with 12 side. So let's just look at this position and like this one and see what's going on because originally is from the hexagon, right? So this angle is 60. So when you take the half of it, then these are 30, right? Against each other. And please remember the half angle formula from sign. We are going to use this one. So when you look at this picture, we are going to take half angle here to calculate the side. Okay? So let me sketch here. Then definitely this one should be perpendicular to the opposite side by this angle bisector and this one is 15 degrees. And another thing is this one is radius, right? So that portion is radius over half of the diameter. So when you look at that small triangle only, then the hypotenuse is D over 2. And let's say the opposite side is x, so that is x, and that is 15 degrees, right? So from there, we know sine 15 degree is x over d over 2. But by this half angle formula, the sine 15 degrees is square root of 1 minus cosine 30 over 2. And of course, it should be plus minus, but right now everything is just positive, so we're just only thinking about positive case here. And what is cosine 30? From that same triangle before, the ratio is 2, 1, square root of 3, right? So cosine 30 means square root 3 over 2. So that is square root of 1 minus square root 3 over 2 over 2. Okay, so let's simplify that a little bit more. Having saying 2 for both, so it's going to be 2 minus square root 3 over 4. And that means it's square root of 2 minus square root 3 over 2. So, when you look at this one and that, let me multiply d over 2 on both sides. Then x equals d over 2 times square root of 2 minus square root 3 over 2, which is square root of 2 minus square root 3 over 4d. So how many of x's do we have? The x is only half size of that. And we have 12 sides, so the thing. So each side is same as 2x, so 2x times 12. Careful, this is regular 12 gone, but the x, what you found, is half of each side, so we have 24 of them together. So small piece of 12 is 12 times 2x, so it's going to be 24 times x, so 24 times the result we just found. So the result is 6 square root of 2 minus square root 3 times d. Okay. So we just apply the same rule okay, for inscribed circle and circumscribed circle. Okay. I keep doing it. It requires a lot of work like that. But eventually, we found some formula. And that's what we are going to cover here. So Archimedes actually, after cover several uh, such uh, small piece of n and capital P of n, he found these relations among these sequences. So at this time, for this part, we want to just check 
this formula is working using our uh, results in the previous case. So we found out the small piece of 6 was 3 times d, right? And capital sub 6 is the 6d over square root of 3, or simply 2 square root 3 d. Okay. Found out that. And of course, that small p12 was like this, right? 6 times that. So please remember that. Then let's just find out small p sub 12, right? Small number. Then the, the formula is like this one. So it's same as small p times 2 times 6, right? So right now, n is 6 case. So small p, uh, that is square root of small 6 times capital 12, which means we have to find the capital 12 first, right? So let's just find capital 12 first. Then it's 2 times, of course, that is same as capital 2 times 6, right? So it's going to be 2 times capital P6, small p6 over capital P6 plus small p6, which we know, right? So capital 6 is like that, so 2 square root of 3d and small p6 is 3d. Capital P6 is 2 square 3d plus 3d. So all together, mm, 12 square root of 3d square, right? Over, be careful, d is the only common factor, so it's going to be 2 square root 3 plus 3 times d, so we can cancel out each remaining 12 square root of 3 times d over 2 square root 3 plus 3. So that's the result, okay? kind of new result. And let's just plug this one into that formula. Right? So let me write down this one here. That square root of small p6 is 3d, right? And capital P12 is this one, so 12 square root 3d over 2 square root 3 plus 3. Then, um, it's just simplification, so let me put this way. Let me put this d square together, and 3 times 12 times square root 3 over, and for denominator, let me factor up square root of 3, right? So it's going to be 2 plus square, square root of 3 times square root of 3, right? Then we can cancel out this too, so, and bring out this d square in front of it, and this is just the, the, the positive number because it's uh, uh, diameter, right? So Actually, we need absolute value of d, but it's just d is enough. And the remaining one is 3 times 12 over 2 plus square root of 3. And this should be enough, right? But we want to check this result is same as the one we found over here. So this fraction, uh, the radical form does, does not have that quotient form inside. So which means we have to somehow simplify this quotient form, right? And in math, whenever you have a quotient form and numerator or denominator has some type of radical form like this, then you need to multiply the conjugate form, right, at numerator and denominator okay, to, to reduce that radical forms, right? So in here, let's multiply the conjugate form of this one, so the numerator is 36, right? So 36 times 2 minus square root 3 over 2 plus square root 3 times 2 minus square root of 3, right? Then, uh, in algebra, a plus b times a minus b is a square minus b square, and that's the way we cancel out this radical form. 
So this one is d square root of 36 to minus square root 3, and the denominator changed to 4 minus 3, right? So it becomes 1, which means d square root of 36 and 2 minus square root of 3, and 36 is 6 square, so bring out 6 in front of it, then we have that, and this result is exactly the same as that result, right? So this formula is good for getting the next uh, values in that sequence. So in this chapter, I just calculate this capital P and small p okay, using that formula. So these are the results. Then when you look at it, we know this is the parameter of the inscribed circle, uh, inscribed regular one, right? And that is circum scribe regular one, right? So we know we have this relation always. And when we increase the number of sides, then they are approximating to the circle itself, right? From inside and from outside. So the gaps of these two numbers are getting smaller, smaller, smaller. So around this many sides. <laughs> then it almost looks like we got the same number and it's kind of after this we got same thing so which means I'm, I'm using Excel again so we cannot get any better result which doesn't mean we are gonna get the same number not like that right it's going further but uh, we cannot handle that on using technology okay? but anyway these two numbers are approximating to the same number right this is going to be 3.1415, blah, blah, blah. And that is the one that we know, which is pi.